So the Kidney for Life initiative's primary goal is better donor and recipient matching. The goal is to reduce the risk of de novo antibodies, lower the risk of rejection, leading to less risk of graft failure. One of the side, side benefits is also the potential for safe reduction of immunosuppression and diminishing the side effects from that immunosuppressive medication. Next slide. So I'd like to turn the call over to Massimo Mangiola from the NYU lab to talk about the science behind the Kidney for Life initiative. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Matt. Um, okay, so to, to explain the, the role of epilepsy mismatch or epilepsy in general in solid organ transplantation, I like to, I like to approach this by, by three essential steps, right? Now, the first step is that of understanding what is an epilepsy and the role the haplet has in the adaptive immune response post-transplant, right? So we're going to talk about this right away. So as you know, the HLA antigen that you see right here is, is composed, is a very complex amino acid structure, and it, it disperses within the structure. There are these hot spots, they are here colored in yellow, uh, that are uh, immunogenic, which means that we have uh, evidence that the immune system of the patient develops antibody against these hot spots. And for the most, uh, everybody calls these other spots HLA epilets, right? Now, when you compare two molecules, uh, for example, that of a patient and on a donor, uh, you see that between the two molecules, there's a lot of similarities, which is represented by the magenta color. You see how much magenta is there in both of them. But then there are these, there are differences in these hot spots in these yellow areas in, in, in the two structures. In, in those yellow patches, those are the HLA applets. Now, following exposure to a known self HLA antigen, for example, this one on the right, right? The your immune system can detect those differences and actually develop an immune response against it. Okay. Now, to give you a better view of these uh, of, of these applets and where they are, how would they do? Let's imagine that we can unravel this HLA applet, this HLA molecule structure in, in, a, in a longitudinal chain, right? Now, this chain is going to be done by a, a group of amino acids that are sort of conserved, and this is the they they form the core structure of the protein chain. And then with this within this core structure, you have dispersed in there some immunogenic amino acids. Acid. Here depicted with these different, uh, you know, hearts and 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 and, and uh, other uh, uh, color stuff, right? Now those are the applets, right? Dispersed among the amino acid structure, and this is what can cause if your immune system detects as them as known self. This is what can cause rejection. Now, in the past, right, when we were comparing recipient and donor, we were looking at their HLA nomenclature number. For example, let's imagine a recipient that is a DR0101 and a donor that is 1101. And, you know, we were saying they are no match. The numbers are different. It's very obvious, right? And we were saying, well, they are no match. There is no difference between them. And we were considering every no match donor is equally mismatched to your recipient. They are all no match after all, right? We know now that this is not entirely true because there is a degree of mismatch between patient and donors. And the applets is what gives you the degree of mismatch between patient and donors. So how do we go about these days, right? And what is behind what the, the what is behind the NKR and the calculation for applets? We unravel these structures in, in, in this longitudinal pro, amino acid structure. And now we can compare recipient and donors by the level of uh, similarity that they have to one another, right? And you can see very clearly that this one, this one, this one are shared between recipient and donors. However, this one and this one are unique to them. Now, by doing this, we can compare the molecular structure of the patient and donor's HLA and say, for example, in this example, donor shares three out of five applets with the recipient, those ones right here. Or you can say, if you want, that the donor has two mismatched applets with the recipient, these two right there. 
Now, why is this important to us, right? The, the importance to this is that we have plenty of evidence and I didn't wanna single anybody out that is seeing an incredible amount of literature out there. So I'm bringing you just four of the most recent and most impactful, but all of them are saying the same story mismatched applets is what cause humoral and cellular rejection. And I want to show you that this is no voodoo science, right? This is not just we met it up. So here is what happens after transplant. So this is in the indirect pathway of presentation and that leads to, to the generation of de novo sensitization. That will be a B cell, your own B cell, the patient B cell, that will have a B cell receptor that, that is after, after all is, is, is an immunoglobulin, right? And this immunoglobulin is specific for a B cell epitope, what we call B cell epitope. What is specific too is a mismatch applet that is present in a donor, in a mismatch donor actually antigen. When these BCR can bind to this mismatch applet, this antigen will be internalized, processed, and presented in the class two, the B cells, in a form of a peptide that contains one of these mismatched uh, hotspot tablets, right? And the B cell is now activated. Sometime concurrent with this phenomenon, the recipient APC will chew up either an entire cells or donor cells, so just an HLA antigen, donor antigen, process it, and present a peptide that is unique of the donor that presents unique applets of the donor to the T cell. The T cell sees this peptide, gets activated, likes it. This is non self. Now, long after, these two cells will meet each other in the germinal center. And when they meet each other in the germinal center, the T cell and the B cell cooperation will lead to the specific humoral and cellular rejection against the target that they saw at the beginning in the peripheral blood. So th th this is the first step, right? What is an applet? what the applets cause, and I'm showing you the mechanism. Is there any question at this point that you want me to answer? If, if no question, but can, can, uh, is anybody monitoring the chat or something? All right, if no, if no question, I will move on. Okay, so step number two for me in this process of, of digesting apple mismatch in solid organ transplantation is to prove, to explain, to show that each donor is, brings a different, uh, a different array of apple mismatch. So a patient can be differently mismatched to multiple donors. And of course, different donors, because they bring different apple mismatch, can cause a different immune response system. All right, let's look into this. As I was saying in the past, we were looking at patient and donor like in a monochromatic way. You know, the patient is blue, the donor is gray. Are they a match? No. Are they one haplotype match? Yes or no? This one was based on the nomenclature, did not give us any quality from the perspective of the immunological risk of transplanting these two individuals. But now we know that what we need to look at is the dissimilarity. And the HLA is like making us multicolor, right? And we need to match colors, and the colors are the applets. The, the, the higher the amount of applets, the higher the risk of developing up, uh, the novo sensitization. So the applet mismatch is giving us the degree of difference between a patient and a donor and describe the immunological risk. And we know, I just showed you that there is a direct correlation between the amount of mismatch and the likelihood of developing an immune response. So when we look at a donor and a, a, a patient and we say like, all right, uh, we have a bunch of donors. Of course, the best practice is to find a match, right? You want the match, but that doesn't happen all the time. We know that, right? So the next step that we need to look at is which one in the pool of donors is the one that is the most similar to my patient. Why? Because the more the similarity, the less the mismatch applets, which translate in a less uh, probability that the mismatch applet will start an immunological fire. 
let me let me let me put this in in a you know I like to put this in a different way that is more practical, right? All right, let's look at these three devices. We got a stick, we got a flint, and we're a flamethrower. And and if I would ask you to put on the chat which one of, of, of these three is more likely to start a fire. I think without looking at the chat, I think we can all agree that the flamethrower is the one that most likely is going to start a fire the first, right? All right, now let's assume I can give you four donors. And those donors are otherwise similarly medically and surgically. Literally, you can cover your eyes and point, and that's the, 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 the donor you would choose. They're identical to you otherwise. But I'm, I'm going to add you the information that they, they have a different degree of mismatch. And one is very low or no mismatch, and one is high mismatch. Now, if I would ask you, in your opinion, of these four donors that you see right here, which one is the most likely to start an immunological fire? I think also here we'll be agreeing on the fact that the one on the left is less likely, but this one on the right is more likely, right? So this is how you frame, in my opinion, the role, the importance level of mismatch and how you discern between, between donors, right? So the third, third step for me is, is that, that we start discussing, which is donor selection does, should not change. So we start from a group, a cohort of donors that are medically and surgically equally. So you, you could uh, transplant. So here the point is to, uh, is to advise patients and donors that uh, although they are HLA compatible and, and, you know, mentioning this thing could be like, so it's, a, it's a kind of art, you know what I mean? The, 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 the fact that you are HLA compatible solely means that you don't have, the patient does not have antibody against the donor. It doesn't mean anything else. It doesn't mean that that donor is immunologically low risk as compared to the other donor. We are just saying that there are no HLA antibody, flow cross match, predicted negative or physically negative. But if, if, you, if you have this spread of donors, if you have the possibility of more than one donor, I think we have to do genetic molecular compatibility assessment so that basically you look at, at, at degrees of compatibility. You can say this is the best, this is the better, this is the worst case scenario. And in this case, I think it is worth to have a discussion to say there is evidence out there, pretty good significant evidence, in my opinion, <clears throat> that some of these mismatches will cause rejection. We can try to find a better combination where we give you a higher probability of avoiding rejection. So for most of us, uh, we don't have a pool of internal donors that's good enough to, 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 to do that, right? So we need to tap in in a national pool. And that's why we team up with, with the NKR and, and the Kidney for Life initiative. Because after all, for most patients, when you go look at the potential donors that are there, this is what you see. You have a lot of greens. And I took, I didn't want to in purpose take the best case scenario where you see a lot of zero. I'm giving you the intermediate situation, but you see that even in intermediate situation, you have a bunch, a bunch of opportunities right there that you don't have. So if this is your recipient and this is your donor, I think it's a I think it's worth to bring up the possibility of improving the compatibility. And, and, and propose, propose to, to use this initiative.